Ahoy hoy, and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we're going to talk about the competition that we have set down for ourselves to uh, resolve. Who will win in a fight between Superman and SCP-682? Let's get started. So first of all, we have to set our parameters for our fight. Uh, I think what we're going to certainly do is uh, have this be a physical confrontation between the two because uh, Superman is in some incarnations known for his intellect, but 682 and 682 is known for having a fairly impressive intellect in some of the stories that feature him. But in general, this isn't going to be a fight. That's, this isn't going to be a fight of uh, what's the word I'm looking for here. It's not going to be a battle of wits. It's going to be a battle of strength, um, which already gives a slight advantage to 682 because Superman's core ethos, if you're not talking about the films, but Superman's core ethos in most media is that his first, the very first thing he wants to do is redeem whoever or whatever it is he's dealing with. It's not always followed in every media, but it is, we're, we're going to have to amalgamate here. <laughs> So what we'll do is we'll take a look at Superman first and see what kind of what version of Superman we're talking about. So Silver Age Superman was unstoppably powerful. Um, this is after Action Comics 1, but like way a little bit later as it got really well established. I mean, we're talking about a character who could push planets out of orbit. Um, our Superman for this fight is not going to be that powerful. Our Superman for this fight is going to be modern Superman. So very, 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 very strong. Uh, heat vision, ice breath, <laughs> and very, very, very close to invulnerable. And flight. Those are the main things we'll be dealing with here. None, no super mimicry or uh, super puppeteering. Like Silver Age Superman had every power you could possibly imagine if you looked hard enough. So flight, super strength, super speed, um, ice breath, laser beam eyes, uh, super hearing, that kind of stuff. All right. So now we've settled on which Superman we're dealing with. It becomes pretty easy to do that. Because, <laughs> again, it's just the baseline. You would think it would be easy to deal with which 682 we're dealing with, right? Just use the one from the wiki. But... Unfortunately, the version of 682 that a lot of people have in their heads is, is different 682 than most people, uh, not most people, that I'll, some other people use. So for me, 682 is mostly, not exclusively, but mostly what you find in just the article, not the termination log. Um, the termination log has been expanded long after the, uh, the actual article is written. So what is contained in it can't really be said to fully be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, representative of what the author was intending in the beginning with. And we'll talk all about how authorial intent doesn't matter here, but for what we're talking about, we need to define what 682 can and can't do. 682, and th th when, he, when linking out to the termination log, the hard to kill reptile, not impossible to kill reptile, by the way, it's actually called the hard to kill reptile on the English wiki at the very least. The hard-to-kill reptile, in its article, is defined as having fairly limited regeneration and adaptive powers. Uh, it talks about how it can filter in liquids and use those to regenerate, but mostly, outside of that, it can't regenerate. However, most iterations of 682 and the collaboration log itself tend to lend itself to the idea that it can just regenerate from anything. And here we can come down to <laughs> something interesting. So you want to pit this highly adaptive creature against Superman. Well, there's a one-to-one -one for that, right? Doomsday versus Superman. This has already happened in a fight. And uh, Doomsday killed Superman and Superman killed Doomsday at the same time. They killed each other. Um, however, I don't think Doomsday, and a lot of people will use this as an example. There's even been, I think, a video that was Doomsday versus 682. 
uh, as though it is a one to one example, like six eight two and Doom, they are the same thing. They are so totally totally not. First of all, um, Doomsday's adaptation is very very limited. Well, that's complicated. The effects of its adaptation are not very limited however its ability to trigger its adaptation is limited there have been comics and this is the problem with inconsistencies of characters and we're not going to get it too much into doomsday here because he's not applicable to this but the point is in some comics you can find <laughs> doomsday has uh, adapts mid-battle but most portrayals of him show that he has to die first to something and then he when he comes back to life and regenerates he is now adapted to that thing. That's not how 682 works. 682 adapts on the fly. When he is pitched, pitted against 173, for example, it just grows extra eye stalks immediately. And in almost in a sense that he doesn't even understand why or how it's happening, just that it works. Uh, we could talk about him, ha about 682 having hyper intelligence and just immediately being like, aha, every time I close my eyes, this thing moves and tries to break my neck. I should grow extra eyes that don't close. Or every time I look away, it's a problem. So let's create something on a swivel that never looks away. There is a superhero that does that, but it's not a DC superhero. It's a Marvel superhero, and it's actually an X-Man called Darwin. Darwin is literally adapts to anything that is thrown at him. His body automatically, evol quote-unquote, evolves. It's not really what he does, but automatically adapts to anything thrown at him. Um, and this has resulted in, you know, Darwin being able to beat many, many, much more powerful things. Uh, but generally you can only get like one power at a time, weirdly enough. Um, I think 682 would be a good, uh, an amalgamation of characters from, uh, from Marvel would probably do the trick. So strength on par with say Spider-Man, a regeneration factor on par with Wolverine, which is very, very strong. And then an adaptation ability on par with Darwin. Put those together and you've got roughly what 682 is. Put put all that together into a reptile and you'll get basically what 682 is. But here's the thing. The closest one-to-one -one, uh, comparison you can get for Superman in the Marvel Universe. Well, that's not technically true. There are closer parallels. But the most recognizable one that I won't have to explain to you, like I could explain to you Sentry or uh, a couple of other very, very powerful superheroes that are basically Superman versions. The closest one that most of the audience will recognize without me having to explain it is the Hulk. The Hulk is super strong, super powerful. OK, and most of what Superman's going to do here is going to be punching. Because uh, I'm going to tell you, his laser eyes are probably going to work once and then it's going to uh, immediately reflect it back anytime it's a problem. His cold breath probably won't be enough to freeze him all the way through and he'll adapt again before that happens and so on and so forth. The only thing that Superman really has going for him uh, is his ability to lift him up and fly him away and probably punch him to death. So what does Darwin do when he encounters the Hulk? And there we come to a problem. Uh, and when we talk about the relative power levels here, 682 and Darwin can adapt to anything, and almost instantaneously. Darwin's first thing is to try and absorb the gamma radiation. His body adapts to be able to do that uh, of the Hulk. That is not applicable here. Although you could say if they're just adapt, adapt, adapt without uh, knowledge, uh, without knowledge necessary, then either one of them could just adapt to have a chunk of kryptonite. Now I have kryptonite. Now you die, Superman. We'll say that can't happen. So what does Darwin do? Well, when the gamma radiation absorption doesn't work, which wouldn't apply to Superman anyway, his body develops the ability to teleport and then forcibly teleports him away from the battle. That's it. That's what he does. He runs. He doesn't run. His body literally runs him away and says the best way to survive this is not to grow super strong and try and fight back. It's not to like, try and beat him in a punching contest. It's to get the fuck out. And this is the problem. If you pit 682 against Superman, I will charitably say, and this is being very charitable, 
because if you look at the original article, none of this is technically applicable. We have to expand our scope to make 682 powerful enough for this to even work <laughs> as a battle. Uh, but if you do that and you've got a 682 that is somehow able to survive this encounter, um, what you have essentially is one option. Run. And run fast enough that he can't find you. And that's, I think, the conclusion here, to be honest with you. I think that is it. That's how 682 versus Superman works out. Superman is too strong. He's too fast. He's got too many available powers for ranged attacks that would, uh, if not incapacitate, temporarily incapacitate 682. However, and this is important, it wouldn't happen immediately. Because once Superman realized that 682 was a sentient, living, breathing, uh, thinking entity, which wouldn't take too long because of the insults, <laughs> he would not try to kill him. And that may be worse for him, or it may be worse for 682, I don't know. But he wouldn't try and kill him, because that's not 682's... That's not 682, that's not Superman's style. Superman doesn't do that, at first. When he killed Doomsday, it was after a long period of time of realizing that one, there was no other option, and two, this thing he was fighting was essentially a mindless beast. He blows up robots, he does fight monsters that are unthinking, and he has killed them in the past. But once Superman understands that something is a thinking, breathing intellect, he will try to reason with it, and he will try to see if he can salvage them somehow. And this is the opportunity that 682 might have to actually get in some punches, at least. I say punches, but in this case, probably uh, bites and uh, claw attacks. And depending, they may be strong enough. Here's the other half of this. And this is something that I had to decide on when I first talked about this. Is the source of 682's power magical in nature? Big, important question here. Because if it is, then Superman will probably die. Probably die. Not necessarily die. Superman has fought things before that can hit him with magical attacks and survived. But Superman has no special resistance to magic because he's just a dude with an alien physiology. Magic hurts him just as much as it hurts you or me. So if 682's source of power is magical, he can do way, way more damage in those opening salvos while Superman is trying his best to reason with him. But that's the other thing. What if 682 doesn't speak and just mindlessly attacks? He looks like a monster. He must be a mindless monster. These are the questions we have to ask. And this is where we settle on our final scenario. We're going to set our battleground on the outskirts of an SCP Foundation site. The SCP-682 has just escaped, and he is making his way to the nearest populated city to kill as many people as possible because he hates all living creatures. And the SCP Foundation, secret up to this point, uh finally just realizes that they have reached the Godzilla threshold and they call in Superman and Superman comes down faster than a speeding bullet flying as quickly as he can to the location and gets there just before he gets to a populated city. And then he starts attacking, assuming that this creature is just some mindless, whatever, probably the SCP foundation lies to him and tells him that it's a mindless creature that you can do whatever you want to, to, until it goes disgusting or something like that to him. And he realizes that this thing is a thinking creature. And so he stops. And he might still stay out of range, but he will try to reason with it. And at this is the point where 682 may be able to get in some good licks. If they're magical, he can dig deep and do some real damage. But if they're non-magical, he's not going to be able to do anything during this time period. And if... 682 is 682, he'll eventually realize he can't do anything to this guy, but he can do tons to those people down the road and keep moving towards the city. At which point Superman will have to make a choice. Engage fully, incapacitate, attempt to incapacitate at the very least, or let innocent people die. And that is the one time that Superman agonizingly 
will actually move in to stop 682. Once and for all. Split him in half with some heat vision, if he can. But remember, 682 might adapt, but he's not going to adapt until it's actually done to him. So, that first... And I've seen instances where Superman just vaporizes people. He can... He can narrow it down to tight beams and cut things, or he can wide beam it and literally just vaporize things. I think, caught unawares, without the ability to immediately adapt, 6A2 could end up vaporized in such a situation. And that would be the end of him, period. Anyway, what do you think? I do think this, I think that, six, I mean, 6A2 is, is held up as this great, powerful creature from the SCP community, but it really isn't. And if we were to throw him up against, say, Spider-Man or something like that, we could go into a real fight. Uh, but if we put him up against Superman, Superman is is leagues in power above uh, above 6A2. It just, it's non-comparative. So that's it, in my opinion. And all of this is in my opinion, because... <laughs> And this is important to say, I speak as though I am an authority on these sorts of things. But guess what? No one's ever, no one's ever seen 682 and Superman fight. We can only make assumptions and guesses and set our parameters. But in the parameters that we've set here, I feel as though it's very clear. Superman wins. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here. I will see you all again on Thursday.